Hello and welcome back to Mikey's Flight Tech. Today with the last segment of my overhead panel, the cabin pressure panel. You will need a momentary on-off-on switch and a 12 position rotary switch. For the gauge you will need 30mm female and male hex standoffs. Temporarily bring one of the shaft holders in place to see where you can place the LED strip. The shaft is made from a 4mm acrylic rod. The motor is centered with an Arduino script and then the needle gear is screwed in place with the needle in its center position. To show up the numerical values on the panel I wanted to use 7 segment displays. And these should be controlled with the MAX7219 controller. You can buy this in a set where the 7 segment displays are already soldered onto um, PCB uh, including this chip but I have bought these displays as single uh, seven segment displays a long time before and I want to use them and so I will use separate components so the max chips as single components and also the displays and to hold all these components at the place where I need them I designed a PCB again I have made this before with the IRS panel and it finally was a success and so I decided to design again a PCB and let it be manufactured professional. And here is the schematic, everything around these two chips. Here you have the displays and everything can be connected to the Arduino via some pins here. And I have decided to mount the two rotary encoders also on this PCB because otherwise they would always be in the way and so here was the possibility to mount them directly onto the PCB. And this is how the PCB came out. You can see the displays on top here and down here and the two encoders. And here are the max chips positioned. Here we have the pins where the Arduino can be connected. And if you are now asking yourself what uh, are these cutouts here, these are there to make room for the hex standoffs of the backlighting panel. And there are also two cutouts here in the PCB to let the light from the backlighting panel shine through and illuminate the text on the top layer. This could be reached easier if I would have installed just an LED here and there um, to illuminate the text, but I have seen this at the illuminated push buttons of the IRS panel and also um, at some other LEDs that there is a difference of the light um, from my warm white LED strip and all these other white LEDs 
and so I didn't want to risk that there are two text lines that are illuminated in a different color and so I have made these cutouts. So let's see how the PCB came out and let's bring all the components on top of it. I used rotary encoders with an included push button, but this is not necessary for this panel. This fixing method of the PCB didn't provide enough strength and so I added some 3D printed spacers later. I became aware of a really small problem while I'm engraving acrylic sheets here. Nearly most of the times I'm aligning the uh, top plate normally so that it stands vertically and the laser head goes left and right over the panel and engraves the text. And I saw that lines or letters that are aligned vertically were a little, little bit smaller or thinner than lines that were aligned horizontally. This may be a result of uh, a little tiny bit um, misalignment of the two axes which isn't worth that I'm investing more time here. And so a viewer gave me the advice to engrave vertically. And I have turned the panel 45 degrees and then going through the engraving. And the text came out more evenly than uh, with the alignment I used before. So if you have a similar problem on your laser, then this might be a good solution. The backlighting panel is mounted on 15 mm hex standoffs.
After the panel is built and installed, let's come to the configuration in MobiFlight and ProSim. Here in MobiFlight, you can see the devices I have added in the MobiFlight modules tab. Here you can see my Arduino A, where this panel is connected to. And down here you will find the devices I have added, mostly buttons, which are connected to one pin each. And then we have here the servo motor, which also only needs one pin to communicate, and the seven segment displays, or better the max 7219 chips. And to control these chips, you need three pins on the Arduino, DIN, CS and clock. And I have set the number to two because I have two chips here installed on the board. And finally, we have the encoders. Each encoder needs two pins on the Arduino, a left and a right pin. And you can tell which pin is which when you look on top of the encoder with the pins showing away from you and then you can say which is the left and the right pin here. You also have to declare a type and there you have different options. I'm not too deep into this topic of what it really does technically, but it has to do something with how the Arduino can see when a step is made on the encoder. And in my case, this uh, zero, 0 option works the best. You can find out which option is the best for your encoder when you slowly turn the encoder um, in two different directions. And if it doesn't change directly after one click after the uh, direction change, then you should try out another option type here. All the devices are configured as inputs and outputs. And here you have to deal really much with the different sizes of the FSUIPC offsets. Let's have a look on my connection sheet to make this clearer for you. Here it is a part of the connection sheet I'm using to document all my uh, connections. And I can highly recommend you to make such a connection sheet to keep an overview of which device is connected to which Arduino and the different cables where they are routed to and so on. Most of the times for LEDs or buttons, we are dealing with an 8-bit unsigned um, offset and we are then using the different bits of um, this offset here. But now when we are coming to encoders, which represent the full value in ProSim or even the seven segment displays here, which are dealing with high values, then this 8-bit unsigned offset isn't enough anymore. You can see this here down at the cruise altitude. I have chosen a 32-bit offset, which is signed, so it can represent negative and positive values. Why have I chosen such a big offset here? Well, with an 8-bit unsigned offset, you can uh, represent values from 0 up to 256. This isn't enough to represent the uh, flight altitude of your airplane. And even a 16-bit offset isn't enough here because ProSim is only using signed offsets for uh, these two values. And with a 16-bit signed offset, you can only represent um, flight altitudes up to something about 32,000 feet. And this wouldn't be enough. And so I have chosen a 32-bit offset so that I can cover all the flight levels with the Boeing here. For the landing altitude, I have chosen just a 16-bit offset because I think I won't come in need of dealing in an airfield that lies uh, on more than 32,000 feet height. Same here for the offsets of the encoders. These are using the same values here. And you can see this here. It is represented by the offsets 
5304 up to 5307 are now reserved for these encoders and other offsets for the altitudes. The configuration of an encoder differs from a button, of course. And let's have a look into the configuration here I have done. When you have followed my previous videos, then you should be familiar with configuring devices here in MobiFlight. If you aren't, then watch my MobiFlight introduction. I will cover everything here in detail. Compared to a button configuration where we only have an on pressed and on released state, there are four states here, on left, on left fast, and the same right and right fast. I've inserted my offset here, the first of the four bytes I will need. And when I turn the encoder to the left, then I reduce my value of one. And when I do this fast, then I will do this 10 times faster. The same on the right, but with the difference that I will raise the value here. And when I turn it right fast, then I will raise it 10 times faster. That's all you have to configure here for an encoder. Let's have a fast look on the seven segment displays here. You have to configure every set of displays by its own. We have the crude altitude set and the landing altitude set. I'm using the FSUIPC offset, which I have inserted here and said that I will use the four bytes this is all you have to configure here on this tab. And on the displays tab, I have chosen my segment device and said that the first chip is controlling the five digits here I will use. I have activated the left padding with spaces so that the numbers are aligned on the right side of the display. In Prosim, you can make all the needed configurations under config configuration and there in the combined config tab. Everything you need can be found in the pneumatic section. Here you will find the uh, switches that you need here. So here we have the outflow valve open and close and also the pressurization auto alternate and manual. In the numerical category, we will find the cruise and landing altitude. Here you can see the two different offsets I've used and the encoders can be found down here also with the same offsets. And here you can see they are using only signed offsets. And this is the reason why I had to choose them also for the uh, altitudes. The gauge can be found here and down here you will find the outflow wealth position gauge and by setting three reference points with these sliders here, you give Prosim the values that it will need to interpolate the values between these points. And now it is time to test if all the configurations are working here. I have running prepared in the background and you can see up here I have Prosim displays running so that we can compare the values on the panel with the values in the simulator here. And when I now click run in MobiFlight, then we can already see the um, numerical values appearing here. Let's check if these are right. Yes, 14500 on the cruise altitude and 400 on the landing altitude, just like this place is shown here. Oh, let's turn the landing altitude encoder to the left, which is reducing the value. And here you can see we can go down here into negative values. And let's test the flight altitude encoder up and down again. So this is working and now the rotary switch here, it is on auto now to alternate. This works and manual works too. 
So let's now test the gauge. It's really hard to see, but we will try here. Let's switch this to manual, I think, and close it. And you can see the needle moving like the needle on the screen is doing. Stopping and open it again. There, the value is raising again. So back to auto. Cheers. I think everything is working. So the cabin pressure panel is working and so is the self-designed PCB. And because the lowest value of pieces you can order of this PCB is five pieces, so I have four left over. And if you are building your overhead after my plans and you're in need of such a PCB, then you can order one from me for eight euros, including the shipping cost. So if you need one, just contact me. But the most exciting event is that after over two years of building the full DIY overhead panel is finally finished. It will be a strange feeling when I now have to move this panel here out of my room and bring it to the simulator where it should be. It was a good friend for me all these years here. But before I will do this, I will make a live stream where I will test all the functions of the overhead and you can follow me then when I'm firing up all the Arduinos, all the motors and have a look at the full lighted up overhead panel. So you will be informed about the date of this upcoming live streams on the usual ways. And if you want to build your own overhead at home, then you can find all the needed files to cut out and engrave your acrylic sheets as well as the needed gabber files for the PCBs and many other construction plans in the member section on my website. So stay tuned for the maiden live stream flight of this overhead panel. And if you don't want to miss this upcoming episode, then subscribe to my channel to stay informed about any upcoming new video from me. So I hope we'll see us soon back on the flight deck.